Welcome back everyone and happy Monday to you. Hope you had a decent weekend despite how bumpy the weather was once again on Saturday. Thanks to everyone who watched our live streaming coverage of the severe weather early in the afternoon on Saturday. Unfortunately, we did just kind of have a repeat of the previous Saturday with strong winds bringing down trees. We had a fatality, unfortunately, in the area. Uh, it was a, a rough go of it as our storms uh, moved through Saturday afternoon. You know, a lot of people were wondering, hey, what's the deal with this? And, you know, it, it, the, the answer is the general weather pattern that brought us the warm winter is also partly responsible for the active weather we've had over the last couple of weeks, including active severe weather events. Low pressure slams into the west coast, all these storms keep coming into the west, and then they move into the plain states, and instead of cutting to our south, they want to cut to the north and the west. That storm track draws in some moisture from the south, from the Gulf of Mexico. The uh, counterclockwise flow around low pressure brings in the mild air, the increasingly moist air, and then we also are seeing some pretty impressive wind fields both at the surface, but above our heads especially. Um, winds of 60, 70, 80 miles per hour, only a few thousand feet above our heads. And so any storms that get going can tap into that wind energy and uh, bring the severe weather, even if we don't have a ton of thunder and lightning. Now, Saturday we had more thunder and lightning, but the previous Saturday, they were mostly showers that brought us the, uh, the strong winds. And then the front moves through and we cool off and the pattern just sort of keeps repeating itself. We're going to break this pattern somewhat, it looks like, in coming days, but we got to get through Wednesday first, and we'll talk about Wednesday's situation momentarily. But first, here's all the storm reports from Saturday. Wow. I mean, of course, a lot of tornadoes out across parts of Illinois and Indiana, and all of this in Ohio, wind damage in western Pennsylvania as well. And in our TV viewing area, of course, lots and lots of reports of wind damage as a result of probably, on average, 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts early in the afternoon on Saturday. Things have quieted down since. A front is stalled to our north. It stays mostly to our north tonight. Might get grazed by a sprinkle in northern Trumbull and, and Mercer, but that should be about it. Another pretty big severe weather day coming uh, tomorrow. Not here, but out to the west, kind of like we had at the end of last week on Friday. Uh, twin moderate risks out. That's level four on the one to five scale, uh, including some of the same places that had high risks of severe weather at the end of last week. So we're talking about eastern Iowa, parts of Illinois, St. Louis area, heading down towards the Ozarks and into extreme northeastern Texas as well. Again, the pattern just kind of wants to repeat itself. In the meantime, uh, as this system comes east on Wednesday, we've got a challenging forecast. This is not kind of a slam dunk like the last couple of events where we could really, uh, with pretty good precision, time it out and talk about the impacts a couple of days ahead of time. Wednesday's severe weather risk locally is elevated but the confidence on severe weather happening, actually happening, is on the lower side. And we're going to get into why that is. But any storms that do manage to get going Wednesday afternoon could really mean some business. Once again, we're just not real confident of the coverage at this point. Before we get to Wednesday, though, while it will be storming out to the west on Tuesday, our weather looks quiet Tuesday. A few more clouds than we had today, but still, nice day. We'll get into the upper 60s in the afternoon. Now, as this warm front lifts off to the north on Wednesday, low pressure will be out here. Uh, there'll be showers and storms near the front. The question for us is what happens well ahead of the front? This is going to be a warm and actually kind of moist air mass for this time of the year. With Saturday's event, we had dew points in the 40s. With Wednesday, we'll have dew points trying to get above 60, maybe even close to 65. And those dew points, that's high for this time of the year. Those are dew points we see much more frequently as we get into meteorological summer. So we'll have the warmth, we'll have the humidity. There's actually going to be quite a bit of wind aloft. The problem with Wednesday is there'll be a little inversion aloft, which we'll get into in a moment. And that may be enough to prevent widespread showers and storms forming in the afternoon. Either way, it's going to be warm. And I mean very warm Wednesday. Record high is 79. We might touch that or even break it. An 80 or so is going to be a possibility Wednesday afternoon. Higher confidence in the coverage of showers and storms as we go through Wednesday evening in the front approaches. While the severe weather risk may be lowering, as we get past dark Wednesday evening, the chances for wet weather uh, will be higher, I think. And it looks like the showers push away uh, overnight, and that'll leave us with dry weather for Thursday through the weekend. Now, as it stands right now, the Storm Prediction Center uh, does have all of Ohio and Western PA outlined in the slight level two risk of severe weather on Wednesday. They actually did a special update to their day three outlook this afternoon, which is very rare. They usually don't mess with day three, except in the middle of the night, but they did a kind of a mid-afternoon update 
to expand the slight risk off to the west because the whole system looks a little bit slower. That may actually benefit us somewhat. If it's a slower system, that means that the most organized showers and storms may not come east until it gets past dark, and that would lower our overall severe weather chances. But as it stands right now, uh, slight risk of severe weather is out. All right, so understanding our severe weather risk categories, uh, it was interesting. In the early afternoon on Saturday, we were actually upgraded to an enhanced risk, level three. We're only in that, you know, a couple or a few times a year on average. That's pretty rare. Slight risk, much more common, and of course, a marginal level one risk, very common as we get into the spring and summer. So right now, slight risk, uh, that's something we see 20 to 25 times per year on average. So we've got uh, a cap to overcome on Saturday. Oftentimes you hear us throw around these terms, a cap, an inversion, a capping inversion. Um, basically, as the sun heats the ground, the ground heats the air, air parcels start rising. As long as those air parcels are warmer than the surrounding air, they'll keep rising. If they do run into a warmer layer aloft, they're gonna stop rising. And if they stop rising, that means that uh, thunderstorms can't get very tall in the sky, and you might not see many thunderstorms at all. When the atmosphere is uncapped, the air has no trouble. It's free to rise really high in the sky. And the higher air parcels rise, the taller uh, thunderheads can be, the higher chance you have of hail, the higher chance you have of tapping into wind energy that's aloft. And with plenty of wind shear, in the atmosphere once again on Wednesday, you know, if if we can overcome the cap, um, we might have a tornado risk somewhere across the region as well. So bottom line, low confidence forecast as of Monday evening about the severe weather coverage Wednesday afternoon, but any storm that does manage to overcome the cap, we'll definitely have to keep an eye on it. One thing for sure, there's been some dramatic trends once again in the longer range just over the last few days, just over the weekend, really. You know, we've been talking about how mid-April looked pretty chilly, but you know, I put this analogy on social earlier on today. It's, it's like Lucy grabbing, taking away the football uh, from Charlie Brown, right? This has been the case for the last several months. With just a few exceptions, when the modeling is advertising cold in the longer range, which it's done frequently, as you get closer to that period, the modeling backs off. And we're seeing that once again in vivid detail now. <laughs> Mid-April, I mean, I looked at the models today like, holy cow. Uh, it looks much, much warmer than it did just a handful of days ago now for that second and third week of April. So this is the 8 to 14 day outlook covering the 11th through the 17th and spring is going to do its thing. And, you know, uh, one of these times we will stop being fooled a little bit by the longer range modeling advertising cold when it just more often than not just doesn't end up verifying. The pattern just wants to be warm and we're heading into... El Nino for the summer. Uh, that may actually mean we don't have an especially hot summer, but if El Nino comes on as strong as it looks like it might, that would have implications for next winter. Uh, a strong El Nino usually does not mean a very cold winter around here, we'll tell you that much. But hey, we'll uh, figure that out as we get uh, into the second half of 2023. Thanks for watching on this Monday evening. I'll see you back here for full updates on Wednesday's situation and much more coming up. Same time, same place on Tuesday.